Howdy Space Rangers, Captain Phoenix here. Today we're doing a slightly different video. Today we're reacting to the Nostalgia Critics review of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the movie, the first movie that came out like in 2010. Um, so for those who don't know, the Nostalgia Critic is a YouTube uh, reviewer, like he reviews movies uh, just like me, except his reviews are a lot better. He's pretty cool with them, I'll leave a link down to his channel below. The reason I'm talking about him today is because he's reviewing Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and he has said multiple times in his videos and like other places that he has not read the books nor is he a fan of them so when i saw his review of this i was kind of excited at first i was thinking maybe he was going to say something nice about it because i really enjoyed the wimpy kid movies and like i have a whole history with wimpy kid but we'll talk about that as we go into the videos so as we go deeper into the video but basically uh i saw his review was kind of lacking something like he didn't seem to get some parts of the movie that were intentional and I thought, me being a fan of the books, I would kind of just be his co-reviewer. I'd react to his content and I'll basically point out when he made a huge flaw in the books. And obviously, we'll keep it going as we do. Because if I exposit everything now, all of you are going to leave before the two-minute mark. So, without further ado, let's get into it. He remembers it so you don't have to. I'm sure this made a fine book series, but man, it made an awkward movie. Alright, I'm going to say it real quick, up front and first... I'm a huge fan of the book series. For those who don't know, again, Diary of Wimpy Kid is a children's book series created by Jeff Keeney. It's supposed to, it's supposed to talk about a kid surviving through middle school. Its origins are funny because it was originally da uh, Jeff talking about his middle school experience. Then he just decided to make Greg uh, 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 a character who is supposed to say the things we all think about society that we don't really say through a kid's perspective. But let's face it, if you're a Wimpy Kid fan, and I'm trusting some of you are watching this are, you know Greg is a sociopath and a psychopath in the making. And yes, I am a huge fan of the Wimpy Kid series. I've read all the books, watched all the movies, even the god-awful ones. So hopefully I will bring a good uh, twist to this. But if any of you are Wimpy Kid fans and I missed something, let me know in the comments. While I didn't grow up with the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, it became such a phenomenon that I couldn't escape at least knowing what it was. Beginning as an online diary in 2004 by Jeff Kinney, audiences immediately fell in love with the stories and drawings and demanded it in print form. They've since become the sixth best-selling book series of all time. Sixth best of all time. A children's book series. That is crazy. Like, that is, like, massive props. Also, Jeff, when are you going to end the series? I get it. it. It makes bank. You get money from it. But please, in order for it to become a successful series, you got to end it somewhere. You can't do Spongebob or Family Guy in book form. As someone who hasn't read it, I can see why this telling of a naive kid trying to fit in by any means necessary could work in this format. As a 2010 film, though, I get the feeling something was lost in translation. This is a bizarrely mean, dumb, and not very funny telling of a supposed sympathetic middle schooler who's so unlikable, I'm kind of rooting for the bullies to beat him up. And that's where you've lost the whole point of the books. The books were never supposed to make Greg a sympathetic character. Greg was never sympathetic in the books. He was always... Greg was engineered to be the most unlikable person. He always got himself into situations caused by his own like selfishness and greed, and he had to pay the price for that. Did he always learn his lesson? No. Was it funny watching him suffer? Absolutely yes. On top of that, the movie is mean for a reason. The movie is delightfully mean because the books were mean. The books had this kind of subtle mean-spiritedness to them, which we all kind of like. That was kind of the charm of Wimpy Kid, drawing us into that world where we get to see Greg just being a horrible person and in the end, him paying for it. I do feel like the Wimpy Kid movies, personally, do benefit from being kind of mean like this. It's not like Tall Girl, where, if you guys know, I really hate that movie duology, but like Tall Girl's world is so mean for no reason and it has no contrast to it. There is no balance to the meanness where you're like, oh, okay, at least we have this. No, Wimpy Kid movies are mean in a way that, yeah, your character, your main character can be mean, but the world beats him up in such a way that if he wasn't mean in the first place, he probably wouldn't even be facing this. We've seen selfish kids in movies and shows done well before, both in humorous ways and relatable ways that make us identify with them even when they do something stupid or mean-spirited. This character in this world does not know how to do that in the same way. If it had a smarter sense of humor or more honest and genuine storytelling, maybe it could have worked. But as is, it's pretty lame and even uncomfortable. I ended up hating this little snot and the fact that he had no identity outside of wanting to be liked. It's not like he was a certain way in middle school is challenging that. He just wants to fit in and there's nothing else to him. So fittingly, that's how I saw this movie. He wants to fit in. 
To be fair, you could make an argument for that. Again, the whole point of Greg's character is that he's supposed to be mean. But let's move on from that. I do think that he has a point in saying that Greg should have an identity outside of wanting to fit in. Because in the books, he had an identity for literally everything else. He, it was always like a get-rich-quick scheme. Greg would make a an excellent scammer if you read the books but basically he was always trying to find a quick way to get money or to make pranks on his friends or just to find some way of benefiting himself while the rest of his family suffered greg was always thinking of something new again again greg would make a perfect scammer if it came to it and with all these other coming of age comedies but doesn't because it has no unique voice I guess people saw it though because they made several sequels and shows, but whenever I look Shows? What bloody show was there? If there's a Whippy Kids show, direct me to it right now. Reviews, it doesn't seem like it won over everybody. So I'm gonna dish why it didn't win me over either. This is probably gonna get me in trouble with the diehard fan base. It opens with our main character, Greg, played by Zachary Gordon, being told he's about to be late for his first day of middle school. We get the shtick of him rushing his morning routine that, I know it's hypocritical me saying this, but is probably trying too hard. But it looks like it's a prank, as it's a beautiful screensaver night outside. We get the iconic drawings where he looks like a more cancerous Charlie Brown, and our opening narration begins. Let me get something straight. This is a journal, not a diary. They're already lying to us. It's like the opening of Superman when he said, I'm really more of a meh man. Not really the movie's fault. This was a joke in the books. It was very clearly a joke from the very first book where he's like, it's not a journal, it's a diary. My mom, I told my mom to get me a journal, but she just grabbed diary on the bookshelf. It was meant to be a joke on how so many other book series at the time while also following this trend because like aside from Diary of Wimpy Kid, we had like popular middle school book series like Dark Diaries, Middle School, like an actual book series called Middle School and I Funny. So Wimpy Kid was playing on that joke, being that there were so many books out there for middle schoolers and all taking on the diary persona that Jeff Kinney decided to say, it's a journal, not a diary, guys. Trust me, I'm a Wimpy Kid. That's the whole joke behind Wimpy Kid. Again, I don't, I don't know if, if you would get it unless you are a diehard fan. So right off the bat, this character's setup is that he wants attention. Okay, that's fine. A lot of kids are like that, but for what? Just being. I always figured they'd make a movie about my life. That's our boy up there. Why did I ever say no to him? When I'm rich and famous, I'll let better things do than answer people's stupid questions all day long. He doesn't have any interests or hobbies. The one thing they say later is he likes drawing, which, yeah, you think that goes without saying, but they almost never show him drawing or even talking about it. And let's be honest, even his drawings are pretty lame. The style works in a book because it's a... All right, I'm going to pause you right now. Greg's whole character is that he wants to get famous just for existing. Greg in the books is this huge narcissistic character who wants attention for l every little thing he does. The, it's not That's not the movie's fault. That's the movie doing its job, adapting the character and their world right. Because again, in the books, Greg always wanted attention. He always wanted to be this famous guy literally just for existing and i feel like and also when it comes when you pointed out the drawing thing greg being a good at drawing yeah in the books they never even develop on that they say like i'm pretty sure in the books greg's drawing skills get only get up brought up wow i can't speak english get only brought up like twice and that's the whole joke is that greg is a good drawer and he'll say he's a good drawer but he'll never ever like advance on his drawing skills he'll never try to improve he's like this is good enough and that's the whole point greg is such a narcissist that he thinks everything he does is perfect and it doesn't need improvement purposefully bad visual making it even funnier when he tries to explain something and you have to use your imagination to help but here you're shown how everything happened so even this one supposed hobby he has that we never see is still pointless it's only done because people remember it from the book he was like Calvin again not even that much emphasized in the book so it's not really the movie's fault people as monsters or something that give a unique outlook but it's just stick figures talking so yeah there's nothing much to this character he just wants to grow up and be rewarded for doing nothing he'll be either an influencer or worse yet a youtuber and what's even funny is that for as many flaws as that movie has as many as much crap as we like to give it the one thing the long haul did right was actually get greg's character down because in that movie basically i even remember like having a conversation with my brother who's like also a wimpy kid fan well like if wimpy kid the book series came out like 10 years later greg would have been an influencer he would have been like a tiktoker or something and what do you know in the long haul the movie uh greg 
idolizes this gamer guy. He's like this influencer guy. And we have like this whole subplot in the movie where Greg is trying to meet him. That subplot was never in the books. It was something that was originally made for the movie. And I feel, again, as much crap as we like to give the long haul, it was the one thing they got right. Greg's characterization and uh, aging them up in modern times. The first book came out on the internet was not that big, but of course, because the long haul came out now when the internet was a normal thing that people use, uh, they use, they developed Greg's character along with that. So again, not really the fault of the movie, it's the movie doing its job and excelling at it. Were you always so smart and handsome? Here's my journal. Now, shoo, shoo. That said, his friend in live action, Martin Prince Rowley, played by Robert Karen is easily the best character in the movie. Joshi says to respect your parents and follow your dreams. My mom doesn't let me play with makeup anymore. Do you have my back? I will always have your back, Captain. For such a throwaway role, this actor makes the most of it. He's supposed to just be the dumb, happy, fat friend, really nothing else. But I'll be damned if he doesn't give a million percent at playing the dumbest and happiest of this trope I've ever seen. I will say, Big props to the Wimpy Kid movies uh, is that they got their acting right. We're not counting the long haul. We ignore that movie for now. But like for the first three films, the uh, the, the casting was so perfect. I loved the Greg's actor, Rowley's actor, Roderick, the dad, Susan. All of them fit their roles so perfectly. I'm just, I want to shake hands with the person who casts those people. Can you say Zooey, Mama? I could try for cutest friends. Jazz dancing. I want it to be mad. By the way, here's a clip count I never thought I'd see on this show. Awkward boy on toilet scenes. There's uncomfortably a lot of those in So, I don't know what to feel about the toilet jokes, because in the books, there were toilet jokes. A couple of them. Not a lot. Not like Captain Underpants levels of a lot. But they were spread out through the books. I don't... I, hmm, it's been a while since I've seen the movies. But I feel like the movies do have them, but... They probably had trouble sprinkling them out throughout the film. Again, it's a lot harder to do when you're dealing with a film and not something larger than a like a book. The way you can sprinkle them out more. Yes. Ew. It's your fault he's still potty trained. The potty monster doesn't like it when you look at him. Ew. Jesus, I can't even make a joke before the next one. What is wrong with you, movie? He brags about how ugly all the kids got over the summer while he, quote, thankfully stayed the same. That's a little funny. But I don't know, I don't think they directed this kid well to give him a likable performance. I get what they're going for, and this dude has turned in plenty of good roles, but I think he was told to be too snobbish and too up his own ass. Because that's what his character like is like in the books! He's as much a part of my life as waking up in the morning and going to the bathroom. Trust me, you don't need to count that. There's sadly plenty more. And that's the thing, is again, like, that's a movie-only joke. So, it really is a bit confusing when you, like, compare the movies and the books. Because, again, the books did have toilet humor, but it felt more spread out. Whereas the movie, it's like, okay, we're gonna, we're just gonna add a bit more here. All the short kids, because, I don't know, everyone's just an asshole in this movie. <laughs> Where they discover the 90s token girl. In a 2010 movie. First of all, I have beef with this actress, but we're moving on. Second of all, um, yeah, she was never in the book. She's a movie-only character. I feel like they kind of did this just so they would have a girl character. Because in the books, we didn't get girl, major girl characters like Holly Hills until like the third and fourth book. Funny enough, by the way, for Wimpy Kid fans out there, Holly Hills was only in one Wimpy Kid book. One. Yet she has become such an iconic character. People still remember her like 10 books later. So it's funny. But anyways, she was never in the book, at least in the first one. And she's only a movie original character. So I don't know why they made that choice. Again, I feel like they just needed a girl character to wait to fill in the role until they got a chance to adapt Holly from the later books. Grace Moretz. It all starts in middle school, you know. You're not a kid anymore. The coddling is stopped. Kids are now separated by intelligence. So, okay, you look at the long intro they give this kid, and you think you get the general idea. She's gonna be kind of an outcast, too, a bit of a tomboy, get in trouble with them, maybe a blooming romance, the usual stuff you expect with a character intro like this. But no, she's almost totally gone for the rest of the movie! And that's the thing, I feel like they didn't know how to write a character, especially because she was never in the books. Again, she's a movie-only character. She takes pictures for the yearbook every once in a while. So I can't really even like blame the nostalgia critic for this because it's not even like his fault for not reading the books. This is the movie's fault for introducing a character who had no backstory. That's it. Why'd you spend so much time setting her up? 
That's like introducing Hermione and then putting her as the school mascot. It doesn't make sense. And again, it kind of, and, and again, I can't really blame him for using the Hermione joke because Hermione is a big character in the Harry Potter books, but she, this girl, was never in the Wimpy Kid books at all. Introduced to maybe the cleverest part of the movie, a piece of moldy cheese that's been on the playground so long, it has its own origin story. Didn't touch the cheese! Didn't have the cheese touch! I feel like every school has something that's neglected and only gets worse over time. To a point where kids tell stories where if you touch it, you're infected until you pass it on to someone else. It's honestly kind of a fun setup. It was madness! Yeah. Nine and fifteen minutes in and we're up to three. Yeah, okay, that one I feel like it was a joke from the book, I think. This is a terrible place. After that kid from Phineas and Ferb tells the story, we cut to... Well, at least I got one joke in between these two back-to-back. -back. I do really like this joke where Greg imagines one of the bullies picking on him being his servant in 20 years. I really need my measly, pathetic job scooping your dog's poop. Whatever, I'll think about it. Damn, like he would ever grow up to look like that. Here's my number. Oh, I just had it ready to go. Greg's brother, Roderick, played by Devin Bostic, spends most of his time torturing his brother and playing in the band Loaded Diaper. Okay, these two get made fun of, but he gets a pass with a band name that sounds like a Boss Baby sequel? Again, that's the joke. He's In the book, Roderick was bad at spelling. He wasn't the, sh the smartest tool in the shed. And so the whole joke is, everyone makes fun of uh, Greg and Rowley, but Roderick is busy out here embracing his absurdity, embracing his foolishness. And with, but only discovers the softest of dirty magazines in his old yearbook. There's tons of things I qualify for. Class Clown. Don't you have to be funny for that? Hey, you said that one movie, not me. Damn, bro, you didn't have to roast the movie like that. He protects himself to try and sneak past his brother to pee and... Yeah. Okay, did this guy direct this movie? Eight-year-old did. But his brother was hiding, and he pisses on him. <laughs> I mean, there's technically no toilet, but I think it... Yeah, no, that one, now that was a movie-only joke. That one did not affect the book. So, again, I can't even really attack Nostalgia Critic for this because it's the movie's fault. And even I thought that was kind of gross. Like, come on. Did I mention yet this kid also likes to play a game where he just hits Rowley with a football? Can I throw at you now? You're better at riding than I am, and I'm a better thrower. <sighs> is there a story to this movie, or is it just a buffet of regret? What's funny about this is, again, I don't, now this is where I have to attack Nostalgia Critic because this was something from the books, especially, it was definitely like, how should I say, word for word ripped out of the book because in the book, Greg also manipulated Rowley to get on the bike and he never wanted to get on the bike himself because he knew it would be dangerous. So you're like, if you know it's dangerous, why are you putting your friend through it? Again, showing us Greg's manipulative side and how he's not really a good character. Also, he asked if there was a story to this movie and I feel like this is something the movie kind of suffers from, not because of its fault, but because of the books. The Wimpy Kid books told their story in a sort of disjointed way. Instead of telling one story from beginning to end, it felt like a collection of small stories and then just put in a book loosely attached to each other. That's how I would describe the Wimpy Kid series as a whole. Lately, they have been getting more serialized. Uh, I think the last five books all have like one complete climax, one ending that just kind of goes on for many pages. But before, it was always it always felt like little stories cut together and then put in one book that were loosely attached. So I can't even really say it's the movie's fault for not getting the story right because the book itself didn't get its story right. Or at the very least, it told its story very weirdly. I usually like it when a film like this has no story. It feels more like an exaggerated slice of life. But there's usually some focus, like trying to get a BB gun or trying to get a baseball back from a dog. This is just a boy battling his shallow emptiness. And it's not cynical or funny enough to be clever. You signed up for wrestling? Greg's dad, played by Steve Zahn, thinks it's great he signed up for wrestling, though. He's another guy I don't think the movie figured out as a character, so they just have him say random stuff in random ways. Well, Greg, I think it's great that you took the initiative to learn something new. It's that smell. I can't even identify it. I think you should go. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Maybe the joke is he was a small sponge version of Michael J. Fox, and now that he's been put in water and grown bigger, he doesn't have the personality. 
I will say, Greg's dad in the movies was that was uh, was portrayed so much better in the books. In the books, Greg's dad was borderline neglectful of his family. He just he just kind of did whatever he wanted. In the movies, I really enjoyed his character. I will say, in the first movie, uh, again, haven't seen the first movie in a hot minute, so I can't really say much in his character. But I do think that he grew more in the second and third movie, especially in the third movie. He was hilarious in that one. So I definitely think it was great casting. They just needed to sharpen in on the writing. And considering it's the first movie, I don't really blame it. With Patty, resulting in the one line in the movie I actually find believable. Her parents threatened to sue, so you show her what it's like to wrestle a real live boy. With this movie's writing, I'm just happy there's not a line that says, There's nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't wrestle! And as you guess, she kicks his ass and is made a fool of in the school paper. Not that he needed help. Yeah, I heard some in the hallway say that Bryce Anderson is a cute butt. A butt can't be cute, it's a butt. What is happening in this film? Not the film's fault, it was a joke in the books. So, not really its fault. Seriously, I feel like half the lines in this could be followed by Basil Fawlty saying, Why don't you talk properly? <laughs> but oh no, Rowley wore the same thing. Clearly this idiotic idea was his fault. Maybe Logic was right about Rowley. Maybe I do need a new best friend. No, you need to read this. LOL! Yes, he needs to read that. I, I, I just, I just, I feel like he should also get a psychopath book as well. This film strip that's not only low budget, but the actors are clearly older than middle school. Greg realizes he's fine the way he is. Funny enough, that film, that film they watched was never in the books. That was also movie original. And I say, for a movie original edition, it was pretty funny and pretty well earned. Like, it felt natural with the world it's in. Thinking pop star who's jealous that I was the one who discovered him. What the hell is he even wearing on Halloween? He must be the only kid in history to dress up as King Wart from Mario. Alright, now this part I do feel like calling Nostalgia Critic out on because I feel like he's also kind of manipulating his audience the same way Cinema Sins manipulates scenes to, tr to lie to their audience. Because he wore this suit because his mom made it for him. She gave him protective gear. This was in the books. And in the movie, I guarantee you, he even said his mom changed his outfit for him. Stop lying to your audience. Rowley's grandma's house who seems to be Rowley's grandma? From what I remember in the book it was Greg's grandma and I'm pretty sure it's the same in the movie. You missed you made a mistake, buddy. I'm gonna kick your butt! That was an unnatural way to say that. Almost as unnatural as playing go fish while waiting for them to come out. Every freeze? Every kid in this is like one of those phony actors from that film strip earlier. Which was ironically making fun of people who don't know how kids act. Are you kidding me? What's funny is, I always found this funny about the bullies, right? Especially in the book, even. That Greg and Rowley hide in his grandma's house. Why would the bullies not think that they could spend the night there? If Greg and Rowley, at least, are related to this person, they could theoretically just sleep there for the night and wait out the bullies. There is no reason for the bullies to stay. I found it very, a very weird thing that both the book and the movie suffer from. I'm gonna rip off your arms and punch you in the face with your own fists. You are a malfunctioning Scott Fargus. They're chased into the woods where his brother said all the killings happen and they hear creepy laughter. <laughs> ah! But it was just that freakly kid. That's uh. Satisfying payoff. Again, not the movie's fault, the book. Honestly, at this point in time, I might as well just cut this video short by like one minute and say, hey man, most of your complaints about this movie come from the source material it's based on. So how about you read that before you kind of just crap all over on the movie? But I'm a review of my word and I review every second it takes. Can't have one great payoff without another. I'm sorry, I thought you were teenagers. I don't even know why he's complaining about this. It was a scene from the book. Let me let me ask you something, Doug. Nostalgia critic, you let me call you Doug? Right, let's call you Doug. So, when people like something from a book, right, and they want to see that, and, uh, and they hear their favorite book gets adapted, they want to see certain scenes from that book, scenes they really do love, get adapted onto the big picture, so not only can they see it now the way they imagined it, but also they can share with their friends and family who are probably not fans of the book. So... I don't know why you're complaining when certain scenes get adapted the way they were in the book. 
the way us fans wanted to see them. Granted, again, I know you said you haven't read the books, but I feel like if you're really going to complain about certain aspects of this movie, especially stuff you don't know from the book, it would have really helped your review if you got a fan of the books to join the review with you or you got from some insider help. Because complaining about what the movie did, especially when it comes to adapting the book and doing its job right, adapting stuff from the book perfectly, it does kind of make people raise their eyebrows and it makes the diehard fans come after you, the diehard fans you so desperately were scared of. You know, a movie like this should really be a minefield of charm. Like, there's so many likable moments that should be exploding. How are you missing every single mind? Is next plan to be seen as cool? Signing up for Safety Patrol. Safety Patrol. The cops in middle school. Did something change since I've been to middle school? Does everyone think the kids from Barney are badass rebels now? Just remember, great power comes great responsibility. I got that from Cal. Ah, look at that. Angie's going for a new look in her story that's not in us. Safety Patrol is the lowest of the low. The Kiki is of the Kiki, the islands of misfit toys. Guess now that she's a photographer, she has to be Vicky Vale. She at least lets him know it's a geeky position to be in. Also, he should really turn down the cop. So are you so mad at the murder? Dressed on his house, that's looking green screen. The big surprise, Rowley gets hurt in their game of Let's Hurt Rowley. This makes him an instant chick magnet, but don't worry, Craig forgives him for having his arm broken by him. I decided to go ahead and forgive Rowley for milking the broken hand so hard. You're gonna end up as either a crime boss or president. Either way, people are gonna want to see you in jail. Yeah, no, and as I said, Greg would make an excellent scammer. And this is so funny, because in the book, this was one of my favorite parts in the book, where Greg broke Rowley's hand, and Rowley said gain attention because of it. And, you know, it plays out exactly like in the movie. Greg gets jealous of Rowley, and he's like, I forgive you for milking the thing. And what's funny is that in the book, he in the movie also, he said he goes up to the girls and he's like, I'm the one who broke his hand. He did it so he could make himself look like a baddie. Like, oh yeah, I'm dangerous. I'm strong. You don't want to mess with me. But it ended up backfiring in his face by all the girls telling him, you're disgusting, you're sick. And I really like this part, especially, again, it was one of my favorite parts in the book because Greg got his karma almost immediately. In the book, whenever Greg something did something, like, uh, weird or wrong, it would always take a couple of pages or uh, a few storylines before he finally got his comeuppance. Here, he got it immediately. He's like, I'm the one who broke his hand. Boom, everyone hated him. And it was so funny finally just feeling that catharsis of seeing this little snot of a kid get what he what was coming. He asked Rally for help on a cartoon contest, but he immediately kicks him out for his bad ideas. Guess what wins his bad ideas? That is funny! <laughs> And again, I also found this part funny in the book. And it was, I don't think they mentioned it in the movie, but in the book, Greg also made an alternate comic called Creighton the Cretin. And that comic got changed so much. When I was a kid, I hated that part. Because I'm like, how dare the principal change it? What's wrong with you? This is a kid's idea and you're making it educational disgusting. Up to now, I still kind of hate it because they really took away agency from Greg. But seeing him fail so hard after, after basically just chasing Raleigh away, it is kind of cathartic. Cartoonists get standing ovations? Where was this shit when I was growing up? I tell you, man, I tell you, they ignore us. The young generation have it so good. But just when you thought this character couldn't get any worse, he puts a bunch of kids he was supposed to take home in a ditch, pretends to be Rowley, abandons them, and then lets his best friend take the fall. You are officially suspended from safety patrol, and I expect a full apology to the kindergartners. Oh, you mean the ones that would say he's not the one that took us? I know this is a children's movie, but if children get punished for handing in D material, adults should too! I'm the one who terrorized those kids! What? You should be more careful who you let your car to. He eventually lets Rowley know it was him that did it. Still trying to pass him off with part of the blame. Yeah, again, something that happened in the book. And it really did show us what kind of a douchey character Greg is. Because from that point on, whenever we see Greg doing something, we always know Greg, whenever he does an action, he always does it to benefit himself. Let others who join in be damned. And he always pushes, does it to push himself further. It's one of the few reasons I actually kind of liked him in the Cabin Fever book. Because in that book, M Manny was the one who was kind of benefiting himself for the rest of his family. Suffered. Dude nearly froze his family to death because no one taught him how to tie his shoes. 
But in the other books, Greg is kind of a douche, and again, everything he does damages his family. And the movies do try and show this later on, like in the long haul, but because he's such a snot, he never really learns his lesson. I do like the character development they gave him for the first three films, though, making him slowly mature up and grow up as each film passes. It was one of the few things the movies did right that the books didn't. Because as I mentioned, the books never had a plan of aging Greg up. So Greg was always kind of a douchebag. In the movies, they realized because their actors are aging, they should probably age their characters as well. Which is why Greg actually ends up being a stand-up dude by the end of the third film. But, uh, and then they just kind of regress all of that in the long haul. However, again, in the books, we get to see how narcissistic he is and how, again, he will kill everyone in order to get himself ahead. And so I feel like this part of the movie really showed us that, considering it was like a bigger deal in the book. And by God, this kid is doing everything in his power to save this movie. You know what, Greg? One of the saddest scenes in cinema history. Not a good friend. Jesus, I love the shit out of this character. That was the what? No, if it was done correctly. He's like the anti-Cartman. He's just so positive that when he figures out his best friend is a jerk, he acts like he didn't want to believe the rumor that mean people could be a thing. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. <laughs> it's so sad. Darcy, man, you and me, we're fucking done professionally. friend and even returns to safety patrol because one of the kids revealed what really happened which is weird because like in the books the kids were confused that rowley was apologizing to them but because they're kindergartners they didn't feel like it felt like they really couldn't say anything because you know children be dumb but in the movie immediately greg told rowley rowley straight up ratted greg out he didn't do the whole don't come by my house he's like f you bro i'm clearing my name right now so i do feel like the movie could have benefited by at least giving rowley some balls Greg still didn't come forward, leaving him to become friends with the Prices girl from Finding Nemo. Greg Huffley, I love you! We're going to be best friends forever. I'll admit the randomness of this kid can be a little funny too. Like his weird wall decor, the fact that he has Twister on the floor despite never having anyone to play with. He's just beating up a kite when Greg asks him for a sleepover. Yet somehow, I still see Greg as most likely to mount human heads. <laughs> which, which is kind of true. Fergley is the weird one. And if y'all remember that weird fan fiction that came out about Greg uh, going through depression, um, you kind of sympathize with Fergley because the way he was characterized in that fan fiction, you're like, you know what? This lines up with the books pretty well. Uh, weird how I'm bringing a fan fiction into this. I am, a, I am truly a wimpy kid. Freaked out by Freakly. So he tries yet another attempt to be popular. Jesus, I wish this was a sitcom so he just learned the dumb lesson in a half hour. By trying out for the school play. He finds he actually has a great voice, but the teacher wants to cast him as Dorothy. When he asks for a male role, she says his voice is too high and casts him as a tree. Your voice is too high for any of the other male roles. Perhaps you could be a tree. I guess she was counting on every boy's voice already to be cracked at the audition. He sees his brother recording him as a tree, though. He cracks and gets in a fight with Patty, who's playing Dorothy. Maybe he'll come over there and beat you up again! <laughs> it's official. I would rather this movie be about any of these kids except the one it's about. Wrestling girl would be kind of cool. That half-rendered CG kid would be funny. <laughs> and by Christ, I am... Well, every time he brings up Frankly, he's got to insult him in some way. ...doing Rowley's absence in the movie right now. Can't they just make up already? No, first he has to get revenge on Roderick by making it look like the younger brother got into his dirty magazine. Do you have anything you want to say to women? I'm sorry, women. This scene, both in the book and the movie, was just hilarious. I think it was actually a lot better done in the movie. Because in the book, it was just Roderick and his mom. Here, in the movie, it's Roderick, his friends, and then his mom. So that clap in the end just made it all the more funny. Because like you're with the boys, and the boys are like supposed to have your back, but they're like... We can't, we can't do anything here, man. <laughs> it was, it's hilarious. Well, if it got Scott the Waz's approval, I'm sold. <laughs> we next go to a mother's son dance because, I don't know, just random things are happening now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we didn't have a mother's son dance in the book. At least not for a couple of books. I feel like they ripped this one out of a later book. And they're just like, we're going to put it in this movie because sure, why not? And I, I don't know. I just, ooh, it did feel out of place. It really did feel out of place in the movie. Also, also, I'm pretty sure this is not Rowley's mom anymore. Like, I'm pretty sure they recast her in between movies, if I'm not crazy. They kept his dad, but not his mom. I take it back. Now random things are happening. Yeah, like this was never in the book. Remember when the toilet 
that stuff was the eeriest part. So, that happened. But the next day, the bullies from Halloween stumble across our two leads and still want revenge. As you'd imagine, they find the cheese and force Rowley to eat it. Now eat it. So, okay, you know what's gonna happen. Greg's gonna insist to eat the cheese to get Rowley off the hook. Nope, Rowley eats half of it. Oh, okay, well, Greg's gonna eat the other half so they'll go through it together. Nope, he's saved. Um, he's gonna eat it in front of everyone to share the pain with his best friend? Nope, he just says he ate it and not Rowley. Even though the movie made it clear, there's no lower he can go on the totem pole. So, yeah, he sacrifices nothing. And that's the funny thing. And I don't think this is the movie's fault, nor is it the book's fault. I would, like, with your other complaints, I would say, okay, this is a problem with the book. But this is not really anyone's fault. This is just characterization. In the book and the movie, Greg did this for his own pride. Because even though he could go no lower on the popularity poll, he still had his pride. And that's what kept his narcissism belief alive. And of course, we wanted to see more Wimpy Kid books. So making Greg humble at the end of the first one would not make sense in order for the concept and the story to continue. It's kind of like the anti-Tall Girl. Well, at the end of Tall Girl, she embraces her tallness. And you're like, okay, you've embraced who you are. You're, you're, you, you see yourself as special. You no longer need to be ashamed of your height. But then Tall Girl 2 comes in, and because she's already embraced herself, they can't go through the same character arc, so they have to give her a new problem, thus removing the whole concept of being tall. And that's why the second movie sucked a lot more. With this movie, they end the book, they ended it in a way that they could be able to tell other stories, while at the same time not fully sacrificing their character. They humbled Greg by like 1%, and obviously again, we have like Greg's narcissism, his high horse that he believes to be on. In the book, Rowley ate the cheese, and... Greg just kind of picked it up saying he did it for Rowley. And he even said at the end of the book, if Rowley ever steps out of line, I will tell everyone that he ate the cheese. Meaning that Greg was, at the end of the book, it was not really hopeful, it was scary. Because now Greg is a manipulator who has who's blackmailing his friend as he's the only other person who knows about the cheese situation. So I really feel like only the only thing Greg, like Greg didn't sacrifice anything. He only just stood up for someone else. And that was kind of like the whole lesson of the book and the movie. Greg learning not to be so much of a narcissist, not really pushing everyone down to benefit yourself. Greg in this situation could not benefit himself in any way, shape or form. There was nothing that he would end up benefiting from if he sacrificed or if he didn't. So he realized that the only way to come out of this situation okay is if he saved someone else by thinking of someone else and putting them before him. That was a lesson of the book and the movie, and it was something he had to go through without also taking away so much of his character that you couldn't tell most stories with him. So I feel like, yes, Greg is a douchey character, but it's not really a problem with the movie or the book. It's part of his character. And obviously, a kid can't just mature overnight, so obviously that's what the other movies are for, to develop his character further. And the books, well, they clearly don't want to age him up, so he's just a douchebag for until eternity. Which is kind of why I kind of prefer movie Greg, if ever so slightly. He at least becomes more sympathetic or at least empathetic to other characters as the movies go on. Except the long haul, we don't talk about the long haul. It's Rowley's reputation, but Greg wanted his friendship back anyway. It feels like Rowley is still the only one who suffers. You want to come over after school? Again, yeah, Rowley suffers. He could have suffered more if Greg didn't stand up for him. But again, Greg had to learn to put other people before him. So he figured, might as well just get my relate my friendship back with Rowley. Which is funny, because they do this whole shtick again in The Ugly Truth, and it's a mess. But whatever. We didn't get an Ugly Truth movie. I cannot tell you how badly I wanted them to make an adaptation of The Ugly Truth and Cabin Fever. I even think they said they were making a holiday special based on Cabin Fever, but it got cancelled. So, what a sad world we live in. Play? Okay. Though I guess you could say he'd suffer worse if the kids found out the truth. Remember, he's friends with Craig again. And Jesus knows, that's going to bring a whole lot of suffering back into his life. <laughs> so, the year turned out pretty good. Oh, yeah, I forgot this shot was a thing. My goal was to be a class favorite, and I made it. Suey mama! And that's the way the news goes. Yeah, catchphrase. I'm sure all the kids said it. I don't know, this movie was bad. Yeah, no, all the kids said it. Like I said before, I can see it working as a book series. Even though I never read it, I can see the potential of a story like this being for kids with a little bit of a mean-spirited edge. But the meanness isn't fun here. It's just stupid, unfocused, and doesn't have much of an identity. Outside of the line drawings, there's no real style to this film. Maybe because there's no real center to the main character. In the end, what's he all about? I don't know, he's just a douche. 
Once in a while, there's a good joke or a funny performance from the other kids, but the way the lead is written and directed doesn't carry any joy. He's just too dumb and unlikable. Maybe one day I'll take a look at this book series and see why it won over so many people, but seeing this movie is not putting me in any rush to check it out. I'm a nostalgia critic, guy. Remember it so you don't have to. And that brings us to the end of this video. I would say though, at the end of the day, I still like the Whippy Kid movie, especially the first three. Those are like the holy trinity of book adaptation movies. Not the best, but definitely something very enjoyable, and I think, uh, you know, something for new, uh, for younger kids to watch. It's not my favorite movie of the trilogy, that reward, that award would go to Dog Days. So, I've already been here and I've already mentioned my flaws with this guy's review. He definitely should have had someone who's a fan of the books reviewing this movie side by side with him if he was gonna complain about certain aspects of the movie that didn't make sense that you would have only gotten if you read the book. Because that's what the Wimpy Kid books, movies were made for, fans of the books. That's what book every book adaptation is for. It's just Wimpy Kid fans were really aiming for the, I mean Wimpy, the Wimpy Kid movies were really aiming for the fans seeing as that's the only audience they had. And so I feel again Nostalgia Critic would have benefited if he had someone reviewing a with him. As said, I still like the first Whoopi Kid book movie and the second one's also really good and the third one's the best. It's a perfect trilogy in that each movie is better than the last. And it really should have ended there because the last two we got... Oh boy! So, in uh, what I would say is, I want to end on an optimistic note. I kind of do hope he reviews uh, more Wimpy Kid movies. I just hope that he at least brings someone who's a fan of the books on with him, so that it doesn't seem like everyone's confused. Anyway, guys, I hope I tried to clear up the air as best as possible. I know this video is like an hour long. Please forgive me. I know I'm an, I am, I've committed unforgivable sins by just talking too much. But uh, if you like, be sure to like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to be part of the team. And uh, tell me, if you're a Wimpy Kid fan, what else did I miss from the, his review? What else did I miss from the books that I that I should have brought up? And uh, what not? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Without further ado, guys, thank you so very much for watching. I have been Captain Phoenix. And with that, I'll see you in another universe.